Good morning to the Commonwealth. This is Young Honey with Raw Dog Radio, bringing you the greatest old-time radio station since the bombs fell. We're going to be hitting you with an arrangement of ragtime on a bridge stories and other old world medias. I'd like to send a specific thank you to publicdomainreview.org and archive.org for organizing and compiling all of this media. Now, without further commentary, we're starting off with Frontier Gentlemen, a late 1950s story collection by John Denton. They have some rather strange customs in the West. There's a town in Montana Territory where it's against the law to carry a gun. The sheriff lives by this order, but other men can die because of it. Frontier Gentlemen. Herewith, an Englishman's account of life and death in the West. As a reporter for the London Times, he writes his colorful and unusual accounts. But as a man with a gun, he lives and becomes a part of the violent years in the new territories. Now, starring Ben Wright, this is the story of J.B. Kendall, Frontier Gentleman. The journey had taken 98 days from St. Louis. I'd come by riverboat, up the Missouri, the little stern wheeler climbing, churning, scuttling over 2,000 miles of sandbar and rapids, then into the lonely wastes of another swifter stream, the Yellowstone, until we finally docked at South Sunday in Montana Territory. My ticket had cost $300, which left me about 50 in my pocket and the slim hope that there'd be a letter at the express office with my remittance from England. Afternoon. <laughs> Just in off the boat. Right. Uh, I wonder if there's a letter for me. Uh, J.B. Kendall? Kendall. Hmm. Any trouble on the way up? I hear the Sioux been kicking up their heels. Sitting bulls making big medicine again. Don't sound good. Oh, we didn't see any. Kendall. Kendall. English, ain't you? Yes, yes. I figured by your talk, don't see many of you in these parts. Nope, nothing for you, mister. You're sure? Uh, it, it's rather important. Nope, nothing. Maybe tomorrow on the Overland, though. Hey, you planning to stay a while? I think so. Better get in register, then. Register? Over to Sheriff Clanton's office. There's a notice on the wall. Maybe missed your attention. All strangers to South Sunday will, within one hour of arrival, register at the office of the sheriff or be prosecuted. That's Clanton's orders. Right, you missed the signs. They're all over. Well, thanks. That's all right. Wouldn't want to see you in trouble. This ain't the healthiest town in the territory. Not for strangers. Oh? Any particular reason? Uh, sheriff's office, six doors up, mister. Afternoon, Mr. Farley. This uh, here's Mr. Kendall, just off the boat. I was telling him about registering. That's a good idea. Dick Farley is one of the sheriff's deputies. Helps keep South Sunday law abiding. It's a big job in these times. What's your yes, business, sir. Mr. Kendall? Oh, well, you uh, you might call me a jack of all trades. I might. I do a little writing for a London newspaper. You know, an Englishman's view of the Wild West. <laughs> that sort of thing. We don't take to strangers. Oh, really? Well, it's a shame. I've been looking forward to my visit. Yeah. Well, you've seen it. Now you know what it's like. Suppose you get yourself back on the boat and try up the line to Rosebud at Junction City, huh? I don't think so. And now, if you'll pardon me, I'll register at your office. You carrying a gun? No. Get your hands over your head. Uh, Higher. Now, you just hold it. Just so. All right. 
That's your baggage? Yes. Pick it up. Well, I don't suppose you'd like to give me a hand. Um, no. No, I didn't think so. Uh, Farley, isn't it? That's right. Uh, tell me, Mr. Farley, how did your town get its name? How should I know? Civic pride, perhaps? Mister, I don't like the way you talk or what you say, so you shut your mouth. Inside here. You just come in off the boat, Frank. Says he's a writer, a newspaper in, in London or something. He ain't carrying nothing. I searched. Uh, you're Sheriff Clanton? Yeah. Uh, J.B. Kendall. I understand I have to register. Yeah. You want to write about South Sunday? I might. How come? Well, as a matter of fact, the name intrigued me. You kidding? No, not at all. I write about the West, and you're in the heart of it. From what I understand, there might be trouble brewing with the Sioux and the Cheyenne. I'd like to be here if it blows up. What's the name of your paper? The London Times. You ever hear of a Duke? No. All kinds come to these parts, mister. I ain't exactly calling you a liar. Well, that's quite all right. One can't be too careful here. Uh, my papers. J.B. Kim. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for your subjects. Yeah. Mm, London Times. That's what it says, you see, Dake? Yeah, that's what it says. Anyone else get off a boat with you? Not that I know of. Well... You sound all right to me, Mr. Kendall. I just remember, I got a set of rules. You live by them while you're here, or you'll get along. I seem fair enough. No man except them authorized by me carries a gun in South Sunday. That way we don't get a bunch of crazy, lick it up miners and the like shooting up the place. It, uh, it seems the usual thing for a man to be armed in most places. Well, it ain't usual here. It's again the law. I see. You got yourself fixed up the hotel? Not yet. Now, you go over to the Empire, Mr. Kendall. Tell them Frank Clanton sent you. They'll take care of you. Oh, that's very good of you. Dick, take a look at his baggage. Bye. You're going to search my luggage? That's yes. right, mister. No guns in South Sunday, not worn or hidden. That's the law. I haven't got one. Glad to hear it. I like a peaceable man. Yes, sir, a fellow like you might think of settling down in South Sunday. The quietest little town in Montana Territory. It's an opportunity for a man. I'll keep it in mind, Mr. Clanton. There's nothing in his bags, Frank. Well, now, Mr. Kendall, you enjoy your stay. Anything you want, you just ask me. And I'd appreciate it if you put my name in your paper, sir. And whatever you want to say is okay with me. <laughs> My hotel room was a palace in comparison to the cabin on the riverboat. And after cleaning up, I went downstairs to the saloon bar in the hotel and ordered a drink before dinner. The place was practically empty, but I wasn't alone for long. Hi. You're the English fella, ain't you? Candle? Yes, that's right. I'm Lila. I work here. Frank Clanton said to be nice to you. I'm being nice. Want to buy me a drink? It's on Frank. Well, I'd be delighted to. Uh, a bartender... Champagne, Harry. Yep. Frank says it's not ladylike to drink whiskey. Say, what you do to that man? I ain't never seen him like this. <laughs> he thinks I'm going to write about him for my paper. Are you? More than likely. You gonna write about me, too? If you want me to. I'm Jake Farley's girl. Jake doesn't like you. He got mad when Frank said to be nice to you. Um, does everybody in South Sunday do what Clanton tells them to do? Sure. Why? You drink. Ah, well, good luck. Ah. Look here, Lila. What about Clanton? You seem like a nice fella. Don't ask questions. Oh. Well, uh, what about you, then? Me? What do you care? Where are you from? I was born in Ohio, got married and came out west. Mm -hmm. Five years back, my husband got killed in a gunfight. Oh. I don't know. I kind of drifted around, ended up here. 
One place is as good as the next. Is it? I guess. What about you? Your home's in England, huh? It was. You one of them lords or dukes or something? <laughs> oh, not exactly. Married? No. Must be interesting traveling around, seeing new things. It has its advantages. But I suppose you'd like to get back home. Oh, let's just say that one place is as good as the next. Oh. You can't go back, huh? Trouble? In a way. It's a... Oh, look, your friend's just come in. Uh, who? Uh, Mr. Farley. Listen, you be careful with him. Jake can get awful mean. <laughs> Doesn't he take orders from Clanton, too? I thought my person was sacrosanct. Don't talk smart like that to him. It riles him. He ain't an educated man. Oh, oh, Mr. Farley, good evening. Will you join us? No. No, I just come to tell you not to get no ideas about Lila. Well, now, what ideas do you think I'd have? I'm telling you. You're telling me what? John, you keep your hands off my girl, you understand? My dear fellow, I haven't touched your girl. The thought never even entered my mind. We were just having a drink, Jake, like Clanton said. Are you all. keep out of this. You know, I find your manner towards this young lady rather offensive. Oh, miss, you, you, you're just asking for trouble, aren't you? No, not at all. Now, you think you can come in here with your fancy talk, your fancy ways, and make a fool out of me? Uh, you know, maybe Frank's a sucker, but not me. I don't like you, and I don't trust now, you. Now, Mr. Farley, it couldn't be of less consequence what you think of me. He'll kill you. Just Shut like... up. <laughs> now, that I don't stand for. Shall we? As I imagine, it's broken. Oh. And now, if you don't mind, I'll relieve you of these. Really, a chap of your disposition has no right running around with even one gun, let alone two. You should have killed him. Uh, what on earth for? Listen, there are two more beside Jake and Clanton. They'll get you. You won't have a chance. I think you'd better clear out before Mr. Farley stops bleeding. He is not going to be in a very nice mood. Where are you going? Down to Mr. Clanton's office. I've got to have a little talk to him. In a moment, we return to Frontier Gentlemen. People who live in glass houses maintain a fine view of the world, but they do give up a great deal of privacy in the process. Folks who like their privacy but want to know what is happening in the world satisfy their needs in other ways. They make it a practice to keep their radios tuned to CBS Radio every day of the week. That way, they can enjoy their surroundings and still take advantage of our far-flung CBS News facilities. To keep an eye on the world, keep an ear on CBS Radio seven days a week. And now, Act Two of Frontier Gentlemen. Can't go down there. Dick went out the back. You'll have told Clanton by now. They'll be waiting. Well, that's all right. What's the matter with you? You want to die? Oh, of course not. They're gunning. If you're gunning for them. Gunning for who? I'm not gunning for anybody. Then why are you going to see Frank? I told you I want to talk to him. Talk. Listen, you got to get out of town. Oh, my dear girl. Don't you know who they are? Should I? You don't know what you've done. You... <laughs> Quick. This way. <laughs> He took my hand and ran back up the street. We ducked down a narrow alleyway, up a rickety flight of stairs, which was a back entrance of the Empire Hotel, and then along a musty corridor past my room and into hers. I don't think, I think they'll think of looking for you here. Uh, your friend, Mr. Farley, is going to be quite upset if they do. His name not Farley. Clanton isn't Clanton. They're the Shelton boys. Shelton? The New Mexico Shelton boys? There are four of them, brothers. What are they doing in South Sunday? Hiding out from Billy the Kid. They killed one of Billy's men down south. Billy swore to get them all for it. That's why Frank will not let anybody around here carry a gun. But how do you know all this? It was my husband they killed. Your husband with Billy? We were both crazy young. Harry joined up with Billy for excitement, I guess. One time he was 
Gone out of town three months. I was lonesome, and I met Dake. Harry came back. They had a fight over me. Dake outdrew him. We ran away together. I see. And you thought I'd come after them, and that Billy had sent me, huh? They'll think it now, too. Hmm. Who made Frank Sheriff here? Nobody. There wasn't one when we came. He, he just took over. Funny thing is, I guess he's a pretty good sheriff. He quit the old ways, kind of likes it here. Why have you told me all this, Lila? I don't know. He talked with me like I was a lady. Indian treats a squaw better than Dake treats me. Maybe I want to see you finish him. Well, it's not going to be very pleasant for you anymore. Pleasant? <laughs> Mister, you've got a funny way of saying things. Is there anywhere that you could go? Uh, friends? In South Sunday? Well, what about home? I mean, Ohio. Home? Know what it costs to get there? I've got no money. But if you could? If I could? I had nice folks, but I don't even know if they're alive or dead. I'd sure like to take a chance and find out. Well, uh, Lila, we'll see what we can do. Where are you going now? To have that talk with Frank. Uh, do you know how to use a gun? Yes. You take this one. Lock yourself in after I've gone. You keep it. I've got a derringer. All right. Here. Uh, in case I have any trouble... It's $50. I don't want your money. Well, at least you'll be able to get out of town. Now, you take it. Watch yourself, will you? Dave's got a mean draw. I'll watch myself. The Shorten brothers and probably two of their chums were out looking for me now. I was pretty certain of that. I was looking for them, too. But the advantage was on their side. The town was strange to me. So I went to the one place where I was fairly sure I'd be safe from a surprise attack. where they are. You're Kendall? I'm Kendall. Billy the Kid sent you. Now listen, I... You may very slowly, carefully unbuckle your gun belt and let it drop to the floor. Now, if you try to be foolish and brave, I shall be delighted to shoot you in the stomach. Oh, not me, Mr. Kendall. You see, just like you Which say... Which Shelton I... are you? Monroe. Very well, Mr. Shelton. I wish you to walk to that cell in the far corner, go in and close the door behind you. You will then stand with your back to the door. You wouldn't kill me. Oh, yes, I would. Now, well, off you go. Close it, please. Good. These, I presume, are the keys to the cell? Yes, sir. Right. Now, turn around, please. Now, I'm going to gag you. And in order to do so... I must put my guns away and use two hands. Now, if by any chance your friends come in and you make an outcry while I'm doing this, I shall teach you a trick I learned in India. It feels like this. Oh, oh, oh. Effective, you understand? Yeah, yeah. Right. Head close to the bars, please. <coughs> by the way, how many are there looking for me? Uh, two. Three. Three. Uh. 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 Now we'll make ourselves comfortable and wait for your brothers. I told you, Mr. Shelton. Not a sound. Mm -hmm. Kendall! We know you're in there! 
Blast. Sando! You hear me? Is there a back door? Mm-mm. Come out with your hands up, or we're coming in after you. All right, let's get that gag off. I can see I'm going to need oh, you. Oh. What? What are you going to do? I'll probably have to end up killing you. Uh, nothing personal, you understand. What do you say, Kendall? All right, you come. Open the door and throw your guns out. Oh, I've got a much better idea. You open the door and throw your guns in. Monroe, you in there? Tell him. Yeah, I'm in here, Frank. Kendall, you come on out. Maybe we can make a deal. You can keep your gun. I think it'd be safer if you came in without yours. We could rush you. You couldn't get all three of us. You have my permission. I don't know how your brother will feel about it. You want to tell him? Now, don't do anything crazy, Frank. He's got a gun at my head. You kill me, Frank. I hate to do this, but I'm afraid they don't believe you. No, no, no. Hey, Frank, you do what he says. All right, all right. Kendall, we open up the door. Throw down your gun. You give us your word you won't shoot? Not unless you do. Any more? No. We're coming in now. Well, pleasant family reunion. The brothers Shelton. Keep your hands where I can see them, won't you? Now, look. Uh, Billy the Kid made a mistake about what happened down south. Uh, Dick didn't mean to shoot Lila's husband, now, did you, Dick? I outdrew him, that's all. Yeah, that's the way it was. Lila knows it was a fair fight. I should tell you. Speaking of Lila, I hope she's well. Well, she's all right. Now, we got no fight with the kid or you. Now, why don't we all go on down to the saloon, have a drink, talk it over? Now, me and my brother's been living a nice, quiet life up here. We won't make no trouble. Now, Dave! Completely dishonorable and most unwise. Uh, Any more hidden armaments? You, you going to... That depends. Mr. Shelton, have you got $500? Yeah, yeah I guess so. Hmm. Well, Lila wants to go home, and that's about what it'll cost. You have the money here? It's in the safe. Uh, sure, uh, she could take the boat out when it leaves in the morning. Ain't that so, Dave? Sure, sure. Get it? Yeah. Good. That settles the account. Now, all of you, you get into the cell. Uh, and incidentally, until this evening, I had no idea who you were, and I've certainly met, never met your friend Billy the Kid. I thought you'd like to know. Hey, what about Dave? He, he's got to have a doctor. He'll bleed to death. Yes, he probably will. Well, I'm going back to the hotel, and if Lila's all right, I'll send a doctor. If she's not, uh, well, we'll find an undertaker. Mr. Kendall. Oh, that's nothing, Lila. Good luck. You ever come Ohio way, you look me up, you hear? I'll remember that. Huh. You're a gentleman. I'll never forget you. Goodbye, Mr. Kendall.
Ah, morning, Mr. Kendall. You hear about the trouble last night? Yes. Sure must have been something. According to the sheriff, a whole gang rode in and tried to shoot him up. He ran him off, though. Oh. Really? I wonder, has that letter arrived yet? Nope. Nope. Afraid not. Mail's already come in. Won't be any more than until next week. Oh. Well, when it does come, perhaps you'd be kind enough to forward it to me. Sure. What address? In care of the express office, Rosebud, Montana Territory. Frontier Gentlemen was written, produced, and directed by Anthony Ellis and stars Ben Wright as J.B. Kendall. Featured in the cast were Jack Crucian, Michael Ann Barrett, Stacey Harris, Vic Perrin, and Barney Phillips. Music was composed and conducted by Gerald Goldsmith. Join us again next week for another report from the Frontier Gentlemen. There's a town in Montana Territory where it's against the law to carry a gun. The sheriff lives by this order, but because of it, other men can die. Frontier Gentlemen. an Englishman's account of life and death in the West. As a reporter for the London Times, he writes his colorful and unusual accounts. But as a man with a gun, he lives and becomes a part of the violent years in the new territory. Now starring John Daner, this is the story of J.B. Kendall, Frontier Gentleman. The journey had taken 98 days from St. Louis. I had come by riverboat up the Missouri, the little stern wheeler climbing, churning, scuttling over 2,000 miles of sandbar and rapid, then into the lonely wastes of another swifter stream, the Yellowstone, until we finally docked at South Sunday in Montana Territory. My ticket had cost $300, which left me about 50 in my pocket, and the slim hope that there would be a letter at the express office with my remittance from England. Afternoon. Just in off the boat? Right. I wonder if there's a letter for me, J.B. Kendall. Uh, Kendall, uh, mm. any trouble on the way up? I hear the Sioux been kicking up their heels. Sitting bulls making big medicine again. Don't sound good. And we didn't see any. Kendall, Kendall, you English, ain't you? <laughs> yes. I uh, figured by your talk. Uh, Don't see many of you in these parts. Uh, nope. Nothing for you, mister. You're sure? It's rather important from, from England? Nope. Nothing. Uh, Maybe tomorrow on the overland, though. They say, are you planning to stay a while? I think so. Better get and register, then. Register? Over to Sheriff Clanton's office. There's a notice on the wall, maybe missed your attention. All strangers to South Sunday will, within one hour of arrival, register at the office of the sheriff or be prosecuted. That's Clanton's orders. Surprise you missed the signs. They're all over. Uh, thank you. Well, that's all right. Wouldn't want to see you in trouble. This ain't the healthiest town in the territory, not for strangers. Oh, uh, any particular reason? What? Oh, excuse me. Afternoon, Mr. Farley. This here's Mr. Kendall, just off the boat. I, I was telling him about registering. Now, that's a good idea. Uh, Dick Farley is one of the sheriff's deputies. Helps keep South Sunday law-abiding. Big job. What's your business, Mr. Kendall? Oh, you might call me a uh, jack-of-all-trades. I might. I do a little writing for a London, London newspaper, you know. An Englishman's view of the Wild West, that sort of thing. Well, we don't take to strangers. Oh, really? 
shame. I've been looking forward to my visit. Ah, well, now, you've seen it. You know what it's like, so suppose you get yourself back on that boat and try up the line to Rosebud at Junction City, huh? <laughs> I don't think so. Now, if you'll pardon me, I'll register at your office. You carrying a gun? No. Put your hands up. Over your head. Higher. Now, you hold it just like that. Just so. All right. That's your baggage? Yes. Pick it up. I beg your pardon. I said pick it up. Oh. All right, come on. Tell me, Mr. Farley, how did your town get its name? How should I know? Well, I thought you'd take an interest, just as a matter of pride, a civic pride. Mr., you know. I don't like the way you talk or what you say, so you shut your mouth, hear? Well, inside. Where you been, Dick? I've been checking on this fellow, Frank. He just come in off the boat. He says he's a writer, a newspaper in London or something. He ain't caring nothing. I searched him. You're Sheriff Clanton? Yeah. J.B. Kendall. I understand I have to register. Yeah. A writer, huh? You want to write about South Sunday? I might. How come? As a matter of fact, the name intrigued me. Are you kidding? No, not at all. I write about the West, and you're in the heart of it. From what I understand, there might be trouble brewing with the Sioux and the Cheyenne. I'd like to be here if it blows up. What's the name of your paper? The London Times. You ever hear of a dake? No. Mr. All kinds come to these here parts. Now, I ain't exactly calling you a liar. That's quite all right. One can't be too careful. Uh, here, my papers. Uh, okay, be careful. Very sudden. London Times. That's what it says. Here, you see, Dick? Yeah, that's what it says. Any other strangers get off the boat with him? No, just him. Well, you sound all right to me, Mr. Kennel. Now, uh, just you remember, I got a set of rules here. You live by them while you're here, you'll get along. That seems fair enough. No man, except name authorized by me, carries a gun in South Sunday. That way we don't get a bunch of crazy, lick it up miners and the like shooting up the place. It seems the usual thing for a man to be armed in most places. It ain't usual here. It's again the law. Oh, I see. You got yourself fixed up at the hotel? No, not yet. Well, and you going over to the Empire, Mr. Candle. You tell them Frank Clanton send you. They'll take care of you. Very good of you. Dake, uh, take a look at his baggage. Right. Well, you're, you're going to search my luggage? That's right, mister. And no guns in South Sunday, not worn or hidden. That's a law. I haven't got one. I sure am glad to hear. I like a peaceable man. Yes, sir. Yeah, a fellow like you might think of settling down here in South Sunday. It's a quiet little town in Montana Territory. It's an opportunity for a man. Well, I'll keep it in mind, Mr. Clanton. There ain't nothing in his bags. Well, now, Mr. Kendall, you enjoy your stay here. Anything you want, you just ask me. And, uh... I'd appreciate it, sir, if you put my name in your paper. Whatever you want to say is okay with me. My hotel room was a palace in comparison to the cabin on the riverboat. After cleaning up, I went downstairs to the saloon bar in the hotel, ordered a drink before dinner. The place was practically empty, but I wasn't alone for long. Hi. You're the English fella, aren't you, Kendall? Yes, that's right. I'm Lila. I work here. Frank Clanton said be nice to you. I'm being nice. You want to buy me a drink? It's on Frank. Oh, delighted, delighted. Uh, bartender. Champagne, Harry. Yeah. Uh, Frank says it's not ladylike to drink whiskey. <laughs> hey, what do you do to that man? I never seen him like this. He thinks I'm going to write about him for my paper. Are you? More than likely. You going to write about me, too? <laughs> if you want me to. I'm Dake Farley's girl. Dake doesn't like you. He got mad when Frank said to be nice to you. Does everybody in South Sunday do what Clanton tells them to do? Sure. Why? Here's your drink. Oh. Okay. Well, good luck. Ah. Look here, Lila. What about Clanton? You seem like a nice fella. Don't ask questions. Well, what about you, then? Me? What do you care? Where are you from? I was born in Ohio. Got married and came out west. Five years back, my husband got killed in a gunfight. I don't know. I kind of drifted around. Ended up here, one place as good as the next. Is it? Yeah, I guess. What about you? 
Your home's in England, huh? It was. You one of them lords or dukes <laughs> or something? <laughs> no, not exactly. Married? No, no, no. Must be interesting traveling around, seeing new things. Oh, it has its advantages. But I suppose you'll be glad to get back home. Well, let's just say that one place is as good as the next. Oh. You can't go back, huh? Trouble? In a way. I... Ah. Look, your friend's just come in, Mr. Farley. Listen, huh? you be careful with him. Dake can get awful mean. Well, doesn't he take orders from Clanton, too? Don't talk smart like that to him. It rouse. Ah, Mr. Farley. Good evening. Would you join us? No. I just come to say, don't you get no ideas about Lila. Now, what ideas do you think I'd have? I'm telling you. You're telling me what? Keep your hands off my girl, you understand? My dear fellow, I haven't touched your girl. The thought never entered my mind. We were just having that drink, Dake, like Clanton. Lila, said. you keep That's... out of this. Do you know that I find your manner toward this young lady rather offensive? Oh, you're just asking for trouble, aren't you? Not at all. Now, you think you can come in here with your fancy talk, your fancy ways, and make a fool out of me? Now, maybe Frank's a sucker, but not me. I don't like you. I don't trust you one bit. Mr. Farley, it couldn't be of less consequence. What do you think of me? He'll kill you, you just shut like up. he... Oh. That I don't stand for. Chum. <laughs> Imagine it's broken. Now, if you don't mind, I'll relieve you of these. A chap of your disposition has no right running around with even one gun, let alone two. You should have killed him. What on earth for? Listen, there's two more besides they can threaten. They'll get you. You won't have a chance. I think you'd better clear out before Mr. Farley starts bleeding. He's not going to be in a very nice mood. Where are you going? Down to Mr. Clanton's office. I've got to have a little talk to him. In a moment, we'll return to Frontier Gentlemen. Who gets the last word? It all depends on who's playing CBS Radio's fascinating game Tuesday evening with Dr. Bergen Evans. A regular panel member is the witty and erudite John Mason Brown. Other guests vary from week to week. This Tuesday, they'll be Gary Moore and Lael Wertenbaker. These bright people take off from language questions sent in by listeners and cover all sorts of fascinating ground before one or another of them ultimately gives you the last word on the question. Get the last word this Tuesday when it comes to you over most of these same stations. And now we return you to Anthony Ellis's production of Frontier Gentlemen. Can't go down there. Dake went out the back. He'll tow Clanton by now. They'll be waiting. That's all right. What's the matter with you? You want to die? Of course not. If you're gunning for them... Gunning you... for who? I'm not gunning for anybody. Then why are you going to see Frank? Well, I told you. I want to talk to him. Talk? Listen, you've got to get out of town. My dear girl. Don't you know who they are? Well, should I? You don't know what you've done. You... Shh. Quick. This way. She took my hand and ran back up the street. We ducked down a narrow alleyway, up a rickety flight of stairs, which was the back entrance of the Empire Hotel, then along a musty corridor, past my room, and into hers. Oh. Uh, I don't think they'll think they're looking for you here. Well, your friend, Mr. Farley, is going to be quite upset if they do. His name's not Farley. Clanton isn't Clanton. They're the Shelton boys. Shelton? The New Mexico Shelton boys? There's four of them. Brothers. What are they doing in South Sunday? Hiding out from Billy the Kid. Dake killed one of Billy's men. Billy swore to get them all for it. That's why Frank won't let anybody carry a gun. How do you know all this? It was my husband Dake killed. Harry joined up with Billy for excitement, I guess. One time he was gone out of town three months. I was lonesome. I met Dake. When Harry came back, they had a fight over me. Dake outdrew him. We ran away together. And you thought I'd come after them, that Billy had sent me? They'll think it too now. <laughs> Lila, who made Frank sheriff here? Nobody. There wasn't one when we came. He just took over. <laughs> Funny thing is, I guess he's a pretty good sheriff. He's quit the old ways and likes it here. Why have you told me all this? I don't know. He talked with me like I was a lady. The Indian treats his squaw better than Dick treats me. Maybe I wanted to see you finish him. It's not going to be very pleasant for you anymore. 
pleasant. Oh, mister, you've got a funny way of saying things. Lila, is there anywhere you could go? Friends? In South Sunday? Now, what about home? I mean, Ohio. Home. You know what it'd cost to get there? I got no money. But if you could. If I could. I had nice folks. I don't even know if they're alive or dead. But I'd sure like to take a chance and find out. Well, Lila, we'll see what we can do. Where are you going now? I had that talk with Frank. Uh, do you know how to use a gun? Yes. Yeah. Well, take this one. Now lock yourself in after I've gone. You keep it. Huh? I've got a derringer. Oh, all right. Now, here. In, in case I have any trouble, it's only $50. I don't want your money. Well, at least you'll be able to get out of town. Now, take it. Watch yourself, will you? Dake's got a mean draw. <laughs> I'll watch myself. The Shelton brothers and probably two of their chums were out looking for me now, and I was pretty certain of that. I was looking for them, too, but the advantage was on their side. The town was strange to me. So I went to the one place where I was fairly sure I'd be safe from a surprise attack. where they are. You're Kendall? I'm Kendall. Billy the Kid sent you. Now listen, You I... may very slowly, carefully unbuckle your gun belt and let it drop to the floor. If you try to be foolish and brave, I shall be delighted to shoot you in the stomach. Not me, Mr. Kendall. You see, just, just like you say. Which Shelton are you? Monroe. Very well, Monroe. I wish you to walk to that cell in the far corner, go in, and close the door behind you. You will then stand with your back to the door. You wouldn't kill me. Oh, yes, I would. Close it, please. Good. Turn around, please. Now, I'm going to gag you. In order to do so, I must put my guns away and use two hands. If by any chance your friends come in and you make an outcry while I'm doing this, I shall teach you a trick I learned in India. It feels something like this. <laughs> Effective, don't you think? Yeah. yeah. Right. Now, head close to the bars, please. Oh, by the way, how many are there looking for me? Uh, hmm? Two? Uh, three. Ah, three. Oh. There. Now, ah, we'll make ourselves comfortable and wait for your brothers. told you, Monroe. Not a sound. Hey. Kendall! We know you're in there. Ah, uh, blast. Kendall! You hear me? Is there a back door? Mm-mm. Come out with your hands up, or we're coming in after you. Let's get that mm. gag off. I can see I'm going to need you. What, what are you going to do? I'll probably have to end up killing you. Uh, nothing personal, you understand. Uh, what do you say, Kendall? Out you come. Open the door and throw your guns out. I've got a much better idea. You open the door and throw your guns in. Mano, are you in there? Tell him. Yeah, I'm in here, Frank. Kendall, you come on out. Maybe we can make a deal. You can keep your gun. I think it'd be safer if you came in without yours. We could rush you. You couldn't get all three of us. You have my permission. I don't know how your brother will feel about it. You want to tell him? Now, don't do anything crazy, Frank. He's got a gun at my head. He'll kill me. Frank! I hate to do this, but I'm afraid I don't believe you. No, no. Hey, Frank, he's going to shoot. You do what he says. All right. Stand up. We'll open the door. Throw in our guns. You give us your word you won't shoot? Not unless you do. One, two, three. 
Any more? No. Uh, we're coming in now. Well, a pleasant family reunion. The brothers Shelton. Uh, keep your hands where I can see them, won't you? Now, now look. Kid made a mistake about what happened down south. Uh, Dick didn't mean to kill Lila's husband, did you, Dave? I drew him, that's all. Yeah, that's the way it was. <laughs> Lila knows it, it was a fair fight. She'll tell you. Uh, speaking of Lila, I hope she's well. Oh, she's fine. Mm. Now, we got no fight with the kid or you. Now, why don't we all go on down to the saloon and have a drink, huh? Talk it over. Oh, me and my brothers have been living a nice, quiet life up here. We don't want to make no trouble. Get him, Jake! My arm! Frankie! Completely dishonorable and most unwise. Frankie! Any more hidden armament? You going to kill us? It depends. Mr. Shelton, have you got $500? Yeah, reckon so. Uh, Lila wants to go home. That's about what it'll cost. You uh, have the money here. Yeah, I should say. Mm-hmm. Well, sure, she could take the boat out when it leaves in the morning. Ain't that so, Dave? Sure, sure she could. Get it. Ah, good. That settles the account. Now, all of you, get into the cell. Oh, incidentally, until this evening, I had no idea who you were. And I've certainly never met your friend, Billy the Kid. <laughs> I thought you'd like to know. Hey, uh, what about Dake? He's got to have a doctor. Or he'll bleed to death. He probably will. Uh-huh. I'm going back to the hotel. If Lila's all right, I'll send a doctor. If she's not, we'll find an undertaker. I want to thank you, Mr. Kendall. It's nothing, Lila. Good luck. You ever come Ohio way? You look me up. You hear? I'll remember that. Oh. <laughs> You're a gentleman. I'll never forget you. Goodbye. Morning, Mr. Kendall. Hear about the trouble last night? Yes. Sure must have been something. According to the sheriff, a whole gang rode in trying to shoot him up. A gang? Yep. Six of them. Dake Farley got hit in the arm. Really? The sheriff ran him off, though. Marvelous. I left to mention that in my article to the London Times. Uh, now, I wonder, has that letter from England arrived yet? No, nope, I'm afraid not. Mail's already come in. Won't be any more till next week. Ah. Uh, well, when it does come, perhaps you'll be kind enough to forward it to me. Sure. What address? In care of the express office, Rosebud, Montana Territory. Frontier Gentleman was written, produced, and directed by Anthony Ellis and stars John Daner as J.B. Kendall. Featured in the cast were Jack Crucian, Virginia Gregg, Stacey Harris, Harry Bartell, and Barney Phillips. Music was composed and conducted by Jerry Goldsmith. Join us again next week for another report from The Frontier Gentleman. Johnny Jacobs speaking. This is the CBS Radio Network.